Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today I've got some amazing PC hardware deals. AMD's new gaming champ gets its first review. This is AMD's answer and Ryzen 8000 is on the way. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, you're likely already aware that Amazon's Prime Day event is coming in just a few days. And just like what we've seen over the last few years, Newegg is doing their own Fantastech sales event. And right now, their pre-sale event is currently going on where they actually have, you can see right here, Fantastech price protection. This basically means that if during their main Fantastech sales event, they actually have prices that are lower on something you purchased with this price protection, they'll actually refund the difference. So this is a great time to buy before things start selling out. So I thought I'd go over some of these deals and there's actually one from Amazon as well. But of course, if you are interested in any of these that I go over, I will have affiliate links down in the description below. It doesn't cost you anything more and it helps the channel out. Either way, starting things off, we have a fantastic deal on AMD's new Ryzen 9 7950 X3D. As you can see right here, with the $105 off, that actually brings it down to below the regular 7950X. So you basically end up getting one of the best gaming chips and a fantastic CPU for professional workloads. Moving on, we have the Ryzen 7 7700X, and here you can actually see that it's already 349 Plus you get an extra $30 off when you use this code. Definitely a great deal there. A fantastic mid-range eight core CPU. Next up, this one actually sort of blew me away and I may end up purchasing it myself. As you can see here, we have a Seagate X20, a 20 terabyte 7200 RPM hard drive for under 300 bucks. It was originally 699, it's now 288.99 fantastic deal here. But of course, if you want something faster, there is actually a PCI Express 4.0 WD Black NVMe SSD M.2 drive, of course, for $139.99. Let's just say storage prices are getting ridiculously good. Moving on, we have the Radeon RX 6600. Now, this is the non-XT version, but it was originally at an MSRP of $330, and you can actually see it is all the way down to $179.99. So this is a great deal for anyone looking for an entry-level, pretty powerful GPU. Next up, if you want something a little bit more powerful, now this isn't the absolute best deal, but it is $150 off, which puts it at $100 off MSRP, the 7900 XTX. Oh, and really quickly, I did want to mention, while I do really like this deal, it is not available for the price protection. Now, all of the others that I've shown you are, but just keep in mind that this is not one of them. Then we have this one right here, the Logitech G502. You can actually see that it's the mouse that I use. So. I love this mouse. It's really good for gaming and pretty much anything that you do. Feels really nice on the hands. I've always loved it. It's 41% off on Amazon, $46.99. And of course, there are quite a few other deals. These are just my favorites. But of course, if you are interested in these, make sure to check out the links in the description below. And next up for today, if you remember not long ago, I discussed a leak that had happened that claimed AMD was releasing a new X3D chip, actually a new 5000 X3D chip. Then a few days later, it was announced. Now, it is unfortunate because this is a Micro Center exclusive, so you do effectively have to be in the US, but if you are, we have our first review and let's just say it looks really good. Let's first start over at the gaming benchmarks. You can see right here, this bad boy at $229 beats out the 7600X with precision boost overdrive and is just under the 13,600K. Yet it's, as I said, only 229 bucks. While of course the 13,600K is 309 and then the 7600X is 250, yet it does better. With that said, given this is a previous generation chip and it's only a six core 12 thread CPU, if you are wanting to do anything like productivity, you definitely don't want this one. You either want to spend a little bit more on the 13th gen chip or you want to get say the 7600X. 
because, well, as you can see here, it is, you can see Cinebench down here, last place, not doing all that great. Of course, it is X3D, so it is, in fact, even worse than the 5600 and 5600X. So don't think of this as a productivity chip at all. Just think of it as purely for gaming. And next up, we have our first look on AMD's upcoming chip that's gonna come with little and big cores. So this is gonna be their first hybrid architecture CPU. Well, it's actually an APU in this case, but of course, as we've seen, it does look like AMD is gonna be bringing these to desktop as well. But this is at least set to be their first go at it. As you can see down here, it was originally shared by Golden Pig Upgrade Pack. I, okay, really quickly. Leakers, you're killing me with the names. I just, I sound ridiculous. Okay, all right, just do it anyway. It's fine. Let's see just how ridiculous we can get, but it is pretty wild. I'm like, I've got this really awesome leak from this known leaker, Golden Pig Upgrade Pack. Yeah, they sound very legit, but obviously, if you've been following this channel for a while, leaks that we see end up being accurate a ton of times, so... It really doesn't matter the name, just something that I thought was pretty funny. But regardless, as you can see, we have the first appearance of, this is a Phoenix 2 chip. So if you remember, Phoenix is the architecture for AMD's uh, APUs on notebooks, and this is Phoenix 2. But of course, as you can see here, this is, well, for one, it's significantly smaller. I'll show you the chip in just a second, but this is a six core, 12 thread CPU with four CUs, which obviously is significantly worse than the main Phoenix lineup, which is an eight core, 16 thread chip with 12 CUs. And when we look down here, you can actually see that the uh, six core, 12 thread CPU is only two big cores, but four little cores. Now you're probably wondering, but how in the world does it have 12 threads? Well, don't forget that even AMD's little cores still have hyper-threading, unlike Intel. It really is effectively a main Zen 4 core. It has all of those features, mostly, at least as far as what we've seen so far, it's just smaller. It's likely gonna have lower clocks, things like that. So obviously this isn't meant to be some powerhouse of a CPU, but I almost guarantee that what AMD is likely doing is just to test this out. This is just them kind of seeing how it's gonna end up being before doing things like bringing it to desktop. Now, when it comes to the chip itself, you can actually see that this is comparing it to a regular uh, Phoenix One chip, and you can see that it is significantly smaller. The chip is right here. Look at just how much smaller it is, I believe. Yeah, the die size is 137 millimeters squared, so around one fourth smaller than the original APU. So quite a big difference in area, and that's obviously thanks to those smaller cores. And lastly for today, we have a really interesting story that was originally shared by Foronix. As you can see right here, a set of patches were recently added to the Linux kernel for AMD and it actually supports the family 1AH, or you would say family 26. Basically, this is AMD's Zen 5 CPUs. So AMD is officially adding support to Linux for Zen 5, which means Ryzen 8000, next-gen server chips, Ryzen 8000, well, we're talking desktop and notebook, all of that good stuff. You can see right here, where is it? The three patches sent out minutes ago, this was just a day ago, so very recently, adds new PCI IDs for AMD family 1AH processor models, as well as adding initial thermal support for, anyway, adding quite a few early things to the code. You can see it right here, family 1AH based models. Oh yeah, the uh, AMD 64 EDAC enablement through does indicate that at least their server CPUs will once again have 12 channels. So that's the same as their Epic 9004 series CPUs and those are for model 0 to 31. Then models 40 through 79 are their desktop and laptop Ryzen parts. So once again, Ryzen 8000. And this of course means that 
AMD is already beginning to add support for these. This is their initial support, obviously, before they end up releasing them. But this is really good news and shows that AMD is on schedule to release their 8000 CPUs and they may, in fact, not be all that far off. Now, we really can't make too many guesses as far as when it'll be before they release. I mean, this is obviously early uh, kernel add-ons, so nothing too huge, but it really is a good sign. Basically, Ryzen 8000 is on the way. So while that does it for today, I know I showed you some of my favorite deals, but let me know what some of your favorites are down in the comments below. And don't forget to check out those deals with links in the description below. And as always, have a great day.